Instead of drawing liquid blood via phlebotomist into a blood tube, instead what we're doing is we're actually taking drops of blood. So for instance, from a finger prick. Peer-reviewed published work actually shows that you can um, you know, uh, make an assessment about a sample uh, using a much smaller amount of DNA. What this invention is, is actually taken that step further and tried to compare blood tubes with blood spots taken from the same individual, then we are uh, starting to see that uh, we find similar signal uh, in those individuals. We've looked at melanoma, we've looked at colorectal cancer, but we anticipate that this work could be broadly applicable to many different cancer types. We know that um, if you can detect cancer early, um, then you can improve outcomes for uh, patients. You uh, find these cancers when there's still an opportunity to potentially cure these patients. There are several established screening programs for some of the more common cancer types. Um, you know, there is mammograms for breast cancer. Um, there is. Um, you know, uh, colonoscopies for colon cancer, colorectal cancer. What's interesting is that even though these tests are very effective, uh, sometimes the compliance with these tests and the barriers to their to access them are, are fairly high. We and others in this field uh, are called liquid biopsies has been uh, you know interested in seeing whether there could be a blood test that could help improve cancer detection. Liquid biopsy is a technology where instead of getting instead of a traditional uh, tissue biopsy that requires a a surgeon or an oncologist. Instead, we can just take a blood draw and we can use that to look for evidence of cancer in a patient. So unlike, you know, walking, uh, you know, walking into a clinic trying to get a CT uh, to get screened, could you actually get a blood test first? And that could help you uh, understand, uh, you know, how much do you really need that CT? So one of the major challenges in conducting liquid biopsy is that the samples have very strict processing requirements and this introduces lots of logistical challenges. So for instance, there's a need for either expensive tubes for processing or uh, ultra low temperature storage or rapid processing. And these things can be difficult to acquire in either rural areas or in low and middle income countries. And so there's a gap that needs to be addressed. We've done some work in this space and we found that uh, you can, uh, in a fairly cost-effective manner using a blood tube, analyze uh, DNA that is shed from uh, a patient's tumor into uh, their blood sample. But what followed from that was, well, what if we could actually start from a much smaller amount of blood? And by that I mean a few drops of blood. Could we still get the signal uh, that we got from an entire tube? Because I think what that could mean is that you could come up with a much more accessible um, you know, uh, approach to uh, testing. And we actually found that by separating the plasma at the time of collection, so instead of collecting just a standard droplet, a standard dried blood spot, if we collected a dried blood spot that separated the plasma, we didn't see this enzymatic degradation that would interfere with our signal. It's not even a tenth of a tube of blood, it's closer to a hundredth of a tube of blood. And really, we only need two or three drops of blood. And some of these samples we collected two, three years ago and have stored at room temperature. But the fact that it separates at the time of collection, uh, it actually maintains quite remarkable stability. You could even imagine a scenario where we are shipping these kits to patients at home and patients can collect the sample themselves, much like, much like diabetics regularly do. So something really exciting about this project is that it has the chance to greatly improve accessibility. So in areas where, for instance, imaging is difficult or impossible for patients, this offers an opportunity for them to have equal access to diagnostics. And we're also just looking to expand our studies and collect more and more patients from diverse backgrounds and verify that these results apply to them as well. And I think this is where we're looking at um, and collaborating uh, with uh, clinicians at UW Health uh, to try and see if we can um, collect samples from patients who've been diagnosed with cancer and, uh, and many more healthy individuals and really see uh, how uh, this signal uh, varies and how well it behaves in a much larger uh, cohort than the ones we have looked at so far. On the commercialization side, uh, I think this is like any other uh, 
molecular diagnostic assay in the cancer detection space. You know, with our commercial partners and industry partners, we need to figure out what the best use case is uh, in terms of applying this approach. Um, and then really taking it through the regulatory pathways forward to make sure that this is uh, an accurate test uh, that will benefit uh, patients if they use it. Hi, my name is Rafael Diaz, Licensing Manager at WARF. If you like what you just saw and want to learn more about these high potential technologies, please get in touch with us with information on your screen. And don't forget to like us and subscribe for more videos from WARF.